It's time for another episode of Invention Dimension, and today is all about building your prototype. In your journey through inventing, you have already learned about problem seeking, finding and exploring different solutions to your problem, as well as the importance of designing your solution by creating plans for your prototype. The next step is to take your research and plans and put them into action. It's time to actually build and engineer your prototype. A prototype could be created in a 3D printer, in a makerspace, or in a fab lab. But many, many prototypes find their beginnings in basements and garages around the world. The materials used are often everyday items like PVC pipe, duct tape, clothespins, recycled materials, and items lying around which the inventor looks at and says, hmm, what if? The inventor begins to combine and try out different materials to help them arrive at the prototype they plan to design and create. They might use handheld tools or power tools, which can be fun. Make sure if you're using power tools, you practice safety and work with an adult. A visit to a hardware store can be helpful when you are thinking about building your prototype too. You might discover a fastener, tubing, or material you didn't know existed. Inspiration can happen as you walk around and explore your world. This makes me think of Lonnie Johnson, American engineer and inventor of the Super Soaker Squirt Gun. When building his prototype, he used a plastic soda bottle, bicycle pump, and tubing. This prototype allowed him to test, improve, and develop what would eventually be made out of plastics and sold all around the world. Since arriving on the market in 1990, sales of the Super Soaker have reached a billion dollars. Today, Mr. Johnson holds over 80 patents and is the president and founder of the Johnson Research and Development Company. Most often, your prototype will not be perfect at first, and that's okay, because imperfections give you the opportunity to make improvements. Inventor Thomas Edison invented the commercially practical incandescent light bulb in 1879. It took him more than a thousand attempts to arrive at an operational model. Today, we will meet inventors, designers, and engineers who will share about how they create and build prototypes and solutions to problems they have discovered. Come on, let's go learn about how others build their prototypes. When we're working with, um, with different folks on what we call solution storming, kind of trying to create through ideas. We try to bring their ideas alive. And so there's a couple ways in which we do it. We do it as a, as a virtual prototype. So we're able to actually create, if, you were, if we're creating an app, we actually create a clickable capability and, and most kids can find uh, how to make an app um, software out there to actually be able to do that. But on the physical side, we, we build, we use 3D printing, we today, um, we've, we use Legos in order to help people explain how something will work, particularly if it's, it's, it's something in motion. We'll build full scale in, in, a, in a process called um, pre, um, 3P. And what 3P does, it actually has you create things out of cardboard that are life-size so that people can understand you know, how things move the difficulty of bringing, say, an elevator into a building after the building's already built, um, how best to service something like that. We use all kinds of creative ways, cardboard, um, Legos, whatever it takes to be able to truly uh, work through um, prototyping and to get people to really see and visualize um, the product or the solution that people are trying to, to make. Did you know that when Thomas Edison was nine years old, he was always asking questions about his environment? And he decided one day, why couldn't I hatch goose eggs? He goes into his grandfather's barn, he sits on the eggs, and he's not successful. He's so disappointed, he runs into his grandmother, and she comforts him by saying, well, maybe you'll invent something people can really use someday. This is one of those inventions when he was an adult, a grown-up. Now, this is, the, this is the demonstration phonograph it records and plays back sound. Never before had this happened. He decided that he could do this based on his sketch and his ideas from the embossing telegraph. Now, this is a pretty large model. This is covered with tin foil. Tin foil looks like the aluminum foil 
you might have that you use to wrap your food in. But it's tin, not aluminum. Now that's wrapped around the drum. Then this is the mouthpiece. I'm going to project into the mouthpiece with my megaphone and we'll see what happens. You'll also hear the charming little piece of poetry that Edison said for the very first time when he experimented with this wonderful invention. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. And I'm going to use my huge megaphone to make the sound louder. All from Thomas Edison, who had a sketch and a great innovative idea. It changed our world, and it was his favorite invention. He called it his baby. So the string ring is an adjustable band that you can wear as a cool ring, like this. And it comes with different fabric patterns you can customize, like these. And then when you're playing a stringed instrument and you think you want to stop playing because your fingers hurt, or you get really painful blisters like these, you adjust your string ring like this, so it can protect your fingers so you can keep playing without your finger hurting. It start, I started off with a glove made out of stretchy cloth, but then it would be too sweaty and hard to carry around. And so then I made something like a Band-Aid, but it, the stickiness ran off and it was wasteful to the environment. After that, I made a finger cover out of the same stretchy cloth as the glove, but it slipped off and it w didn't stay on my finger when I was playing. After that, I made a finger cover out of a balloon material, but it pinched me and I couldn't take it off and put it on. I needed two people to do that. After that, I got really creative and sewed two of my sister's hair ties together and glued Velcro on so it can be a thing, so it can be a ring and a finger protector. But it was too thick and affected the sound. After that, I came up with my final idea, which is a specialized Velcro material with padding on the inside and cool design on the outside. And it's designed in such a way that the sound stays the same. Um, well, actually, this is my first prototype. The, the first time it actually worked, and so. The that's when I created this, my second prototype, and then I added on to it to create my third prototype. I, as you can see right here, I spent like actually a lot of time just making sure that the ring was in place with the, the, all the um, fabric, and then I needed to pin the cloth to, uh, to the ring to see if it would look right, and then I needed to staple it, and this is my second prototype, and then my third one, I took out the staples because I didn't want any dogs biting the staples, and I put even stronger staples, but then I secured them with um, daft tape. A piece of cardboard with another one stapled onto it to make a pocket and there are plastic bags inside of it that fit right into the pocket. There's double-sided tape on the back so that when you pull it off you can just stick it to your tissue box. When you blow your nose you just have to pull out the first bag. It's the, the bags and uh, Take your dirty tissue and stick it into it. And then once that bag is filled up, you just rip it off and there are more there. It took me three tries to finally get it right. My first try was this, which is just a piece of cardboard with plastic bags sta cut and then stapled onto it. But the problem with this was that the tissues didn't fit in the bags and they would fall right out every time you put one in there. And that wouldn't solve my problem. So then I made this, which is almost the same thing, except the bags are longer, so the tissues actually do fit in it. But the problem with this was that the bags were just hanging there and it didn't look professional. So then I made this one, which is just a, the, a, piece of cardboard with a cardboard pocket on it and the plastic bags in it. Well, I learned that it's not going to happen on the first try. It may not happen on the fifth try, or the twelfth try, or the fiftieth try. Maybe it'll happen on the hundredth try, or it won't happen. And if it doesn't work, well, at least now you know what not to do. So you can try something completely different. As you learned in today's episode, building your prototype is an important step in the invention process. Remember, think safety first. 
consider different materials. Go to the hardware store and a variety of places to look for inspiration. Try lots of different ways to build your prototype. Keep in mind, it doesn't always work the first time, but don't give up. Keep trying. Build another prototype. Keep improving until you arrive at the solution that works, and you'll be an inventor too. It's time for me to get back to work on my prototype. See you next time.